I feel that learning about my World War I ancestors would be really exciting. I know a little bit about them already, so I'm looking forward to learning a little bit more. I would love to know the most about my family, um, the regiments they were in and the battles that they took part in, because I know snippets and names, but nothing, nothing in depth, really. We found an incredible amount of information on your three times great uncle, uh, Leonard. We discovered, before we get into the First World War, that Leonard was a professional soldier before war broke out. Okay. I'm aware you're, you're fairly well travelled yourself and, you, and you've been to Africa. I have, yeah. Interestingly, so has Leonard. Have a look at the locations of service. Can you see? Oh, South Africa. Yeah, that's right. You have home, then St Helena, mm -hmm. just, just off of South Africa. South Africa, the East Indies, and then back home again. And so... That's some pretty cool places. <laughs> It must have been like mind-blowing and so surreal and, and far removed from anything he'd ever experienced. But he was here during the, uh, the Second Boer War and it was a really brutal experience of the British Army. And although, yes, war had moved on by the time Leonard had served in the First World War, he must have learnt a great deal. So he wasn't obliged to serve again. But he does enlist, he voluntarily enlists. And the census we looked at in 1911 showed that he was single. But you can see the year, a year later in 1912, he did marry. He married um, Rita Florence uh, Heathfield. Um, if you carry on going down, you can see the birth of their child here. Gladys Doris Florence Seabrook. But can you see what's recorded below? Oh, date of wife's death. Oh, so she died shortly after giving birth. So oh, six days after yes. the daughter was born. Gladys was, uh, was sent to live with her, her grandmother, uh, Leonard's mother, whilst um, he was off at war. A really interesting find, a very sad one, but it's the kind of thing that a military record can really open up. He joins up and he's joining the, the Royal Engineers who are obviously providing like technical support and trades and skills to the army. Okay. What was really interesting was where Leonard ended up serving. I did a little bit of digging and it was in, actually in Mesopotamia okay. or modern day Iraq. Oh, wow. This was a campaign that commenced uh, in 1914 um, against the Ottoman Empire or Turkey as we, as we mm -hmm. know them. It slowly, slowly turned from success almost into failure because the, the Turkish put up stubborn resistance, they were underestimated, and a huge number of British soldiers ended up having to um, surrender in April 1916 at Kut, uh, the fortress there. And it forced the British to reorganise, rethink how they were going to approach the, the campaign. Mm -hmm. And that's when we see, after April, coming into October, that's when we know that Leonard arrives in Mesopotamia. Um, and I have a quote here for you from a soldier, a Scottish soldier that served in Mesopotamia. And these are his thoughts when he arrived. I wondered if you just wanted to have a re read that out. And uh, Looking at Basra from the water, it was a lovely sight. And the palm trees and the red sand and the glowing sun and all of the different colours of the various costumes and fruit. It was really a lovely sight, but we got an awful drift of smell from the shore and it was far from beautiful. It wasn't a nice smell at all. The Indian Army played uh, a huge role as well here in Mesopotamia and the British uh, and Indian soldiers uh, combined suffered 16,500 casualties in action. That's a lot. But they sustained over that 16,700 from disease and sickness and the heat as well. I mean, in the daytime, the heat, it was so hot that almost nothing could be done. I mean, you had to do it in the early in the morning or later in the evening. Um, and that's why you don't see these large scale offensives like you do on the Western Front because it was just too hot we can see that he was finally demobilised in May of 1919. So I think it was interesting to find out that my ancestor was in Mesopotamia, uh, which is modern day Iraq. I think if I could send my ancestors a message, it would be thank you uh, for the part they played in the war. Obviously, so many people did play a part and it's been great to find out the uh, role that members of my family have played in that.